Just a few videos back, I made a video on domestic violence in relationships. The video I'm gonna react to is only seven minutes long, but if you wanna gain more information on this topic, go ahead and click onto that video. I actually speak to a psychologist about domestic violence. Finally, someone else other than me in the community is talking about serious topics that everyone needs to know about, especially in the LGBTQ community. So Amber's Closet uploaded a video called Domestic Violence and Lesbian Relationships. From what I've seen so far in her videos, she's very informative in the topics she speaks about. So we're gonna go ahead and react to this video. Are y'all ready to react? Cause I am. Let's get it. Lesbians, stop putting your hands on your girlfriend. <laughs> That's simple. That's What's simple. What's up, beautiful people? It's your girl, Amber, and today we gotta talk about something real deep but necessary. Y'all know I love my lesbian community and all I wanna do is empower and uplift, but sometimes we need to be called out. And one of those things is domestic violence in lesbian relationships. And when I call people out on it, others get upset. When I talked about Krissa and Alexis and how I believe they're in an abusive relationship, it's to inform them because I don't believe that they know that they are in one. But shit, when I see it, I call it. Lesbians, stop putting your hands on your girlfriend. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I've heard too many stories from friends about abuse in relationships. And it seems like this behavior over time has become normalized in girl-on-girl -girl relationships. And we just cannot allow that to continue to happen. Now, I thought this was a good time to bring this up because it is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Domestic Violence Awareness Month is in October, but pride stuff got in the way, so I wanna talk about it now. Let me drop some crazy facts on y'all. One out of three women will be assaulted by an intimate partner in their lifetime. 30% of LGBTQ couples experience domestic violence. Acts of domestic violence happen every 15 to 18 seconds, and 11 women lose their life per day due to domestic violence. And that's why this up When I see things like this with people that I know personally, I let them know. Like, girl, do you realize that your relationship is abusive? Sometimes when you're inside of the relationship, you're unaware. If you see the signs with someone that you know, talk to them. You don't want things to get worse. It's so important to talk about. Let's talk about what domestic violence is. Domestic violence is a pattern of behavior in any relationship where someone is trying to gain or maintain power or control over an intimate partner. Abuse can be physical, sexual, emotional, economical, or psychological actions or threats that influence another person. That includes... And the psychologist that I spoke to actually brought up spiritual as well hurting, injuring, blaming, manipulating, or threatening another person. It happens with all ages, races, backgrounds, cultures, and sexual orientations. Let me kill some myths right now. First and foremost, all women can be abusive. No, it's not just the butch in the that's, relationship. It's not the person that's bigger in the relationship. Mm. No, it's not the person that's louder in the relationship. And there's no such thing as she abuses me more. If there's abuse going on, abuse. it doesn't matter at what level it is, abuse is abuse. I have been in an abusive relationships. I'm the stud in the relationship. Guys, that shit don't matter. There's nothing in me that wants to hurt my partner. They're not able to control their emotions. So they act or react physically. So when they're on the attack, all I can do is block or try to hold them as much as I can. We need a bust is if the aggressor is under the influence while they abuse their partner, drugs and alcohol are not to blame for their bad behavior. Mm -hmm. And like I was saying before, Abuse is more than just hitting. It can be threatening, it can be the action of, it doesn't have to be physical. It can be sexual and mental as well. Now, when I talked to some police officers, they said one of the number one calls they get are domestic violence in lesbian relationships. And let me tell you what the problem with that is. First of all, it doesn't matter which partner calls the cops or if it's neighbor. When cops are called and they show up on the scene, they don't know how to handle LGBTQ relationships. And that's the problem, especially with girl on girl relationships, because they can't differentiate the abuser from the victim, which is dangerous for everyone. The other thing is, is there's a lot of people out there that are scared to talk about their sexual orientation or show their same sex partner to anyone so they keep their abuse to themselves. And that's an issue. You can't keep that to yourself. And also, this is why we need to be better friends and this is why we need to be better community by having more resources for people to go to. Where okay, so you saying that, Krista being your friend and you being this educated in domestic violence, I really hope 
that behind closed doors, you speak to her. Let them know the situation that they're in. If she was my friend, that's something I would have done. But because we're not friends, the only way to reach her was through video. So I hope you practice what you preach, girl. I feel like their information can be private and they can feel safe. The other thing is, is that we're scared to reach out for help because in LGBTQ relationships, we also have to deal with homophobia and people not knowing how to handle or what to do to help. So cops or social service workers or anybody might not know how to handle LGBTQ relationships. So what are some solutions to handle this? One of the things is we got to do it for ourselves. And that means calling each other out, call that friend out and tell her that she's wrong. She cannot and should not be putting her hand on her girlfriend. We Facts. need to be educating each other better and we need to work 100%. on personal issues and personal trauma that we have. Domestic ahead, violence girl. mostly comes from how we feel about ourselves and what we went through growing up. But if we don't deal with that, it's gonna carry into our relationships and our workplaces and who we are for the rest of our lives. Mm -hmm. We can't let that happen. And the other part of this is we need to call out our community to provide services and resources that actually work for LGBTQ relationships. We need to call on our leaders to support and educate police officers, teachers, doctors, and nurses to understand the full spectrum of LGBTQ right. relationships so that they can actually help a victim out of a dangerous situation and not just call the cops to deal with that. Because we A lot of these sources don't understand it. She's right. When they see two women, it's like, well, they're just having a fight. No, they are in an intimate relationship just like a heterosexual couple. The woman in that relationship can be the abuser. Officers, automatically when they approach a scene, they look at the male, they question the male, not realizing that the woman is the one abusing him. It's just hard for them to understand. I know what calling the cops and them showing up, especially for people of color, looks like and we don't need that mm. and the reason why i'm bringing this up too is because i personally have been in a few abusive relationships now at the time a lot of this behavior was normalized so i was thinking that this is just stuff you have to go through in a relationship but it never felt right to me eventually i had to pull away from relationships i wanted to stay in because uh. i'm running into obstacles where i realized my partner could not change their behavior you cannot be with a she speaks from experience and I can appreciate that. I spoke from experience as well, but I can understand why people don't wanna take my word for it because I don't have such a big platform as like she does. But I am glad that she is using her platform for the good. So if y'all ain't gonna listen to me, listen to Amber. And if y'all don't wanna listen to both of us, Watch my video because I spoke to a professional. But keep in mind that someone's experience is real. Do not discredit them. They know more about that topic because they've been in one. As for me, in my first relationship, that relationship was abusive. And it happened often to the point where it was just normalized. I was like, okay, it's, she's pissed off, here we go. I did not consider it domestic violence until I got into my second abusive relationship. I'm like, hold on, this ain't right, this ain't right. Y'all can't be touching me like this. And that's when I got more informed about it. But listen to Amber, y'all. She's, she's speaking from experience. They can't find other ways to deal with their emotions or frustrations and learn how to communicate with you better other than just hitting on you when they get mad. You don't deserve that and you don't need to be in a situation like that. And now I wish I had someone that told me that a long time ago because the abusive partners that I had over time would just show me so much love that they were just like, I love you so much. This is why I'm so emotional. This is why I'm so aggressive. But it's passionate to move, and I don't want to deal with that. I actually had an ex-girlfriend that got aroused by creating turmoil between us just so we can have makeup sex. Like, listen, uh, that was fun, but that's toxic, boo. I don't toxic. That. I had another ex that every time she got intoxicated and she got frustrated, she'd find a way to put her hands on me. Now, me personally, I will never put my hands on a female, period. Mm. You know, I don't really... See, as for me, in that first relationship, she's hit me maybe five different occasions. Now, I managed to hide that behind closed doors. But that last time, she hit me in front of all my friends in the car. I had nowhere to go. We were in the car. There's five of us in the car. Three of us in the back seat. Me, my girlfriend, and my friend. This girl started hitting me until finally, I hit her back. And that stuck with me all the way up to this point, I'm like, does that make me abusive too? Because I hit her. Until I spoke to that psychologist on that video about domestic violence and she said that would be considered self-defense. So, ooh child, I thought I was like, damn, that shit fucked me up. Damn, that shit made me an abuser? 
Thank God it wasn't that. But I still feel bad for hitting her because I would have never. I would have never. Nothing in me would want to. Like fighting unless I'm in the boxing ring, period. But I would never put my hands on my girlfriend. Ever. And that's because I'm also aware that I'm really strong and I got hands. I would ah. never want to harm anybody. Women, y'all need to realize that too. We are strong, we have strength. Why do we want to harm a person that we care about? Right. But I had an ex that every time she got intoxicated, she would find her way to want to put hands on somebody. And then when I stopped her from doing that, she wanted to put hands on me. And I had to get her to realize that that wasn't good. And y'all, I have had my beat by some exes in the past. Damn. I was trying to hold them down, but they said he kept hitting me and that's not okay. I didn't deserve that. No one deserves that type of behavior. So if someone is like that, you need to stop them and tell them to deal with their because they shouldn't be treating someone that they care mm. about like that. But I also- And that's the thing I wish my friends in, my, in the car would have said something. They never did. They just told her to stop, 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 trying to take her off of me. But they never took me off to the side and talked to me and told me, girl, you are in an abusive relationship. Nobody. And I wish I had someone to tell me. I had an ex that I didn't even realize was abusing me until I left. And that's because all she did was abuse me through words. So the things that she would say would be tearing me down and making me feel bad about myself. And mm. I never let it really get to me, but of course it hurt my feelings to hear somebody that I love and care about kind of tear me down. But in reality, I was able to look and say, all right, she's not happy with herself. Maybe this is just a phase. Maybe this is just something that we're gonna get through. Uh. But overall, I was like, yo, I have to go because if you can't even catch yourself from stopping yourself from literally saying hurtful words to me, then you don't really love me like you think you do. Matter of fact, you don't even love yourself uh, like you probably think you do. Uh, Anyways, you guys, I really just wanted to bring this subject up. I know that it's hot and heavy, but it's very necessary, and we gotta do our part to make sure that we shut this down within our community. We cannot allow this to happen anymore. We need to stick together and do better for each other, because when we do better for each other, we do better for ourselves, we do better for our community. But if there's any stats or anything that I missed within this subject, please put in the comments below. And I'll see you guys soon with the next video. I love you so much. Stay amazing, stay proud, and stay woke. Hey, peace. Let's go. I like that video. It was short and straight to the point. But if you want to get more information, go ahead and watch my video. Again, it's right there. Click onto it. All right, you guys, tell me what you thought about this video. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. And please hit that bell so you can get notified every time I upload. See you in the next video. Peace.